Hello. Welcome Lytanian, back. Lytanian, Kajimiesh, Yarek. Three decades, more or less. The days I spent in Yarek were the most dull. No opponents. Bro, shut no up. No challenges. Okay. Welcome back to Arknights. <laughs> that was a long ass speech she just went on. Um, I haven't played in a long time, but I do have enough for this. So let's grab this real quick. Okay. That's a lot of good shit. Um, I now have 12,000. I asked in the Discord if it's worth doing the current banner, and one person said no so far. So if you guys know if it's good, tell me, and I'll do a poll for the next video. 220 polls actually uh other than that though we are going to be playing break the ice and i chose break the ice because i'm about to unlock degenbrecker's module which i've been trying to do for a while <laughs> um i should be able to do this pretty easily i just need like shaw or something i already looked at the map i don't know how like the enemy spawn because i didn't like check that but for the map I need like Shaw to be here pointing down to like push him back down here to keep him somewhat organized, I guess you could say. Um, not really sure what to do past that point though. I don't know. I'll I just I, I need to see how the enemy spawn to be able to guess. Okay, let's just go into it. I'm gonna keep this one to where I'm reading and playing, then reading, because that's how I already started the series, so I should probably finish it in the same way. He's not sending any men after the other clans. He's just guarding the vine, vine bear court. Right, he's guarding the vine bear court. Now he's truly seized the count the court. On the surface, he's won. History is written by the victor. Uh, on the surface, he's won. You're right about that. Even I understand the way Enciodes does things now. Him landing back power. Him handing back power is all a feint. He wanted to flip the whole table over all along. People of Kyrgyz still can't imagine life without their god. True. Enciodes knows what life is like without god. This isn't Kyrgyz's problem. Uh, people of Kyrgyz still can't imagine life without god. Right. Most of us thought he had no way to overcome the Kyrgyz people faith for Kyrgyz. They thought he didn't have what it takes. Um, yeah, that's very true. Especially saying that in... Lake Silbernahers, uh, they're still worshipping her while also being more technologically advanced. The Great Elder, Rotados, Arctas, even I thought so. Not that this has anything to do with me, a lowly maid who serves the Saintus. Speaking of which, I thought <laughs> you'd ask me why I'm here with you. There are many reasons to choose to be an observer. Just like you have many reasons to choose to interfere, right? Thank you, Doctor. I'll stand firm with my choice, and I hope you will too. Oh? Oh yeah, it's sharp. Doctor, the work is done. Where are they? Uh Yeah, I'm gonna ask where they are. Um I couldn't keep the clan leaders. Rotados asked me to give her you her thanks, but it looks like she's got her own plans. She went back to her territory. Arctos is heading well, Arctos is heading back to his place too. Looks like he's gathering his forces to fight it out with Entoads. Fair. Honestly, he's kind of trying to, like, overthrow everyone, so it makes sense to want to fight it back. Doctor, if we let them go back to their lands, won't the, that, like, that, won't that lead inevitably to death? Uh, uh, only they can control their people? With the way things are, this is how we can keep casualties to a minimum. Um... Uh, what the doctor's saying is that with how furious the crowd is, they would most likely have gotten a death sentence right there and then if the two of them were caught. And even if that wasn't the case, they would still no doubt stand trial. The two of them may be labeled traitors, but the two families' subordinates, especially the Palaroches, don't buy that so easily. And regardless of whether they take up arms or start infighting, Karag will fall into chaos. But whichever it is, NCOs will be the righteous one. To him, even if things start out chaotic and there are considerable casualties during the process, the whole mess can still be cleaned up in the end. Hmm. He's not the kind of man who will just sit it out. Right. NCOs went through all that trouble to shape this situation. Yeah, because he was like pretending to be super religious suddenly and like 
walked from his house all the way up the mountain without looking up and like praying the whole time and stuff like that and didn't even like get water or anything so like he really went out of his way to get his way that's funny he went out of his way to get his way in the end that means he cares about the masses when i bummed when i bummed around carlin trade i heard a thing or two about his methods most of the staff there thinks he's got foresight and now that he chose to stir the pot out in the open like that you can tell it's his best option despite all the risks it comes with i, I sure hope so the silver ashes and the brown tails were on better terms in the past naturally he's planted more than a few of his pawns who can help control this chaos the problem is still the Palaroshes. Their equipment and combat prowess may be behind the times, but their numbers are no joke. Right, and the Silver Ashes have always been on a, on pretty bad terms with them. Besides, the Palaroshes men are all very loyal. It's hard to say they'll betray the Palarosh clan, even with everything that has been transpiring. That's why I can understand why the Doctor decided to help the two of them. A family can only come together if the family's head is still alive. And as long as we can influence the leaders in some way, the Doctor can still pull off some rough plan. Still though, Doctor, I guess I don't have to say it, carrig has got some complex terrain. It's not easy to get around here. We don't have much time. Let's meet with them first. Hello, old man. It's the sad music. Sorry for the wait, matriarch. Sorry that you have to help me now, of all times. Don't mention it. I'm a brown tail. This is exactly the time I should stand with my matriarch. Do you believe anything NCO says? No, of course not. He has been framing you. He has to be framing you. I'll go the preparations. It'll take some time to get back to the brown tail territory from Silver Ashlands. Uh, though I have a car ready, and I pulled a few strings. Once you and Madam Sirius are Sirius are ready, I will make sure you two are taken back to the to, to the hour land. Wait, is that to the hour land? Yeah. <laughs> Any news from back home? After word about the ceremony got out, a few towns near our territory's borders started flying the Silver Ashes flag. That sucks. There's nothing like that toward the center, but enough. I have a decent idea of how many. Men, how many men he planted inside her family with how many of them there are I'm afraid I won't be able to count all of them even when they're all gathered in one spot has NCO's been up to anything the Silver Ashes have set up camp at the foot of the Mount Carlin and on the mountainside hmm at least he's a man of his word the populace there has been very receptive to him too absolutely shameless they saw Arctaz's betrayal at the ceremony with their own eyes, after all. Hmm. Out of everyone who doesn't trust Arctaz, it's gotta be those who saw his crimes with their own eyes. <laughs> I just did air quotes. That don't trust him the most. Let's not talk about him. What about you? What are you getting from Enciodes? Uh, I don't follow. Drop it already. Your acting's terrible. Come out. Come on out and arrest Rotados. Ooh, bah! Unconscious. If I couldn't see through that trap of yours, then I have no business leading our clan. Aha! Rotados, I heard the cars. What's going on here? Take a guess. He was going to sell us out? Looks like you're not as stupid as I made you out to be, dear sister. Do you have to mock me even at a time like this? How many are still on our side? How many? How right, how many? Cirrus. Do you understand what big a mess you've caused? I I never thought. <sighs> That's exactly the problem. You never thought. You never think. What was I supposed to do? I, I just wanted everyone. I wanted to show everyone that I can do something. The brown tails too. I just wanted to help you. You look tired, Rotados. Are you okay? If I say I'm not. Fine. I get it. This whole thing needs to end somehow, right? I was the one who started all this, so I'll be the one to end it. And I still don't know how Yucatan and and my subordinate are doing. I can't sit here and wait any longer. Wait, where are you going? I'll find that prick NCOs. <laughs> I'll tell everyone that it was all a personal grudge between me and him. And none of this has anything to do with the brown tails. 
He can take my life if he wants, but he has a hand. He has to hand my people back. Hmm. Clearly, she doesn't die. The sun is like right in my eyes whenever I sit forward. Ah! Sis, sis, why did Grandpa yell at you again? You don't. You've done so well. Is it because you're going to lead the family? Is that why he keeps yelling at you? In that case, I'll be clan leader. I'll go to Grandpa and ask him to stop yelling at you all the time. I'll lead the family so he can yell at me all he wants. <laughs> it's okay. You don't need to worry about me, sis. I've got Yucatan here for me. We promised each other we'll always play with each other. He'll help me. He's really good at studying, too. Also, you never cry when you get yelled at, sis. Even though you never cry, I don't know why. It really makes my heart ache. She's mean to her sister, even though she loves her so much. I guess that's fair, though. What's with you, you stinking bitch? You can laugh at me, even at a time like this. <laughs> uh. <sighs> Roos, my silly sister. Uh, oh yeah, they call her Russ. Roos? I would say Roos. You're probably cursing at me in your head again, aren't you? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny how much they act like siblings. They got, like, the writing pretty good for that. <sighs> Come back. Don't go looking for NCOs. You should stay out of this. Things aren't as simple as you think. Cirrus, do you remember we last had a nice... Do you remember when we last had a nice chat together? That whole sentence was butchered by the <laughs> translator and me. <laughs> I don't remember the two of us having a nice chat ever. I guess not. All right, I need to think about what to do from here on out. You should go back to whatever it is you do. Oh, and be careful on your way home. Don't get caught. What do you mean? You aren't heading back to our land? Arctaz most likely hasn't gotten back to his estate yet. Once he's settled down some, he'll probably go out and pick a fight with Enciodes. I've got to do something before that happens. Don't you do anything stupid. Don't forget, Enciodes got Yucatan and Munch. And you, if anything happens to you, I'm gonna be running the show back home. Don't you forget that. That's a scary thought. <laughs> oh, hi, lady. I didn't know you were in here. My cat just came. A bug just attacked me. Hi. What's up? Come here, sweetie. Wah. <laughs> lady. Sears could end up running the show back home, huh? That might not be so bad. I have a tail in my face. She usually doesn't just chill, so she's definitely going to like attack the mic or something. With tail in my mouth. Look, it's Sir Arctus's team. I heard he poisoned the Great Elder during the ceremony. Shut up, all of you. Think about it. Could he possibly do anything as underhanded as poisoning someone? Well, no, but you're a Palor Roche and you don't trust him. Ah! Enough, Gulo. Taking out on the common folk, have you no shame? But sir, it doesn't matter if we were framed by NCOs. What's done is done. Saying anything isn't going to help our case. But do we really have to swallow our pride and take it? Swallow our pride? Of course not. I'll hand it to him. He's good. But do you know what's the biggest mistake he made? He didn't kill me at that ceremony. As soon as we get back to the state and our forces gathered... We'll head back to finish the fight with them. We'll show NCOs just what a big mistake he made. <laughs> Very well. I should have expected no less from you, sir. He's gonna die. Because... The Shigata have... Better technology. I won't give you this chance. Vol Wait, what's her name? Volnace? Volnace. Those men behind you. Are you betraying the Palaroches? Place. The House of Palaroche treated you well. Why are you doing this? You treated me well? You still don't remember even now, do you? Remember what? I, Arctaz, am an honorable man. When have I ever... Uh-oh. Lore drop. This is, um... Don't be afraid, Valace. Your father will get much better once he takes the Great Elder's elixir and has the evil in him expelled. He was injured during the Holy Hunt to protect us. The Great Elder figured he was probably attacked by the Shigata when we, he was all alone. He's too weak now. Come, I'll give him the medicine. Why isn't my father awake yet? And what is this green stuff on his lips? Evil has spread too deep. Karagander no longer allows his presence here. 
He argued with the Vine Bear Court several times before. He must have been under the Shigata's influence. And it culminated... Oh no, she's in the green screen. That's not good for me. She's going to attack me. And it culminated in the Shigata coming to take him back today. The elixir couldn't regain his strength and faith. And this is, must be her will. Are you in here? Please don't get me. She likes to run back and forth through the green screen. And the whole thing like comes flying at me because like she's running so fast it's leaving like wind to push it at me. I'm scared. The wine the Great Elder drink. It can't be. Yes. Do you remember the bottle of elixir that the Great Elder brought with him when he visited my father? How it was nowhere to be found? I'm sorry, my master. Oh, damn. The Great Elder poisoned her dad. I mean, good that he died then. <laughs> That's the weird thing about certain, like, political standings. And usually religious-based political standings. It's like, someone at the top getting corrupt and, like, power-hungry is bad for everyone. Because he was obviously power-hungry and corrupt. And the one dude kept questioning him. So... What do you do? You just slip him a little poison in his wine. <laughs> like, so yeah, I'm glad he's dead then. <laughs> Plus then I don't have to keep talking in his voice. I had my doubts and I didn't fully believe it either until the moment the great elder collapsed during the ceremony. I sent my own officer to, with my own hands? I don't blame you, it wasn't your fault. But perhaps it's high time that Carrick saw a change for the better. I hope you won't stand in my way. Please think of it as a way as, as a way to avoid having even more loyal Karag warriors end the way he did. Damn. Keep Arctos from running into any trouble on his way, huh? Looks like the doctor got it right again. But I really should have brought Blaze with me. Out of all the elite operators who take the enemy head on, she's the only one who's got the mobility to traverse the mountainous terrain here but the trains stopped Carrick's transportation network might as well be non-existent oh uh, whatever let's get going beard i got a handful of beard oh yeah <laughs> dragon brecker just knocked his ass out i forgot about that do you have to go oh it's encios and gnosis yeah, my parents have already decided there's no room for us in Kerrig anymore. Damn bug. Hacking me. Don't believe it was your parents who did it. It's definitely got nothing to do with you. I believe it, though. What do you mean? I don't know if my parents really did it. I also don't know if I was an accomplice somehow. Even if you were, I'd forgive you. No one looks up to my father more than you. I know that. NCOs, remember our dream... Of course I remember. The two of us will turn Kerrig into the most powerful country in the world. But you're leaving. I'll be back. Really? Yeah, my parents are thinking of moving to Victoria. And I'll go to school there. This is a good opportunity. I'll study all the advanced stuff there. And once I'm done, I'll come back and help you. <laughs> you jerk. In that case, I'll let you in on this idea I have. I haven't told anyone about this yet. What is it? I'm going to leave Kerrig once both Enya and Ensha have grown up. Like you, I'll study lots of things and come back. You're the future clan leader. Can you really leave Kerrig that long? I'll come find you when that happens. So they are friends since they were children then. Hey Gnosis, here's your food. Shh. Don't think you're getting out of this mess just because you're keeping quiet. Let me tell you, every last person in the Silver Ash clan wants to skin you alive right now. How dare you do what you did to Sir Encios and the Saintus. If it wasn't for his orders to keep you locked up here, I wouldn't give you even a sip of water, let alone food. Not going to eat, drink, or even make a peep, huh? Alright then, you can rot here and die for all I care. That's sad. Gnosis, you've changed quite a lot. You never used to sneer at people much less belittle them as worthless. I tell you the same. You would never use your status as a weapon, and you never thought much of social pleasantries. It was something I had to learn to deal with the nobles. 
and I couldn't care less how others see me if it means I can better focus on my research. What kind of research are you working on? Life science, as well as originium, originium analysis. Sounds complicated. What about you? Surely you must already have a certain standing among the nobles here. Do you remember what we said to each other when you left Kerrig? I'm very glad that I left Kerrig, Gnosis. It wasn't until I came to the outside world that I realized we no longer live in times where isolation is enough to keep ourselves out of the affairs around us. In the past hundred years, there have been countless exchanges and conflicts between nations. Colombia rose quickly in a conflict, while Gaul, a powerful country, was wiped out in a conflict. All the world's nations are slowly changing in these times, separated by catastrophes. Refusing relations with others is no longer an option. If Kerrig remains as it is, keeping its borders closed under the assumption that will earn us a life of peace and tranquility, then only destruction awaits us. We've reached the end of this peace and tranquility. We can't, we can't wait for anyone to throw open these gates for us. Kerrig must make contact with the outside world. We must take that step while we forward while we still have control. Come, help me, Gnosis. Hmm. That's sad. This sucks balls! <laughs> Stop complaining. You're starting to make me feel that way, too. I really don't get it. Why is Serencio's only locking up Gnosis? If I were him, I'd separate the traitor's head from his neck straight away. What do you know? How is beheading him going to calm Serencio's anger? He treated Gnosis so well, only to be betrayed. If I were him, I'd torture this guy some. You have a point, but aren't we going to go to war with the other two clans? I want to be on the front lines. Look at you all bloodthirsty. Master, how is Gnosis doing? He's fasted for a full day, sir. He hasn't said a word since we put him in there. Didn't even respond when we shouted at him. Let me talk to him. Of course. Hey. What do you think Sir Enciodes is going to talk to him about? Uh, how would I know? Didn't Gnosis used to be the trusted confidant? I'm betting Sir Enciodes is going to poison him, give him an honorable death. You've been reading too many novels. That said... Seems Rotatus is seeking the Great Elder's help. Both you and I knew this would happen sooner or later. They can't possibly believe everything you have done in this name of Kerrig. Most of the company's employees know that it is Carlin Trade they're working for, not Kerrig. Or something you start when you have a choice. I hope you can understand my hand was forced. Perhaps you're worrying too much. Bring down the other two families and rebuild. It's much easier than the honorable solution you're pursuing. Kerrig would never truly accept me if I seized power by force. In that case, let me do it. I have far less worries than you do. Let you do what? You can drop the act, Enciodes. This idea has crossed your mind. We both know that. Let me, the son of a sinner, the villain of Carlin Trade, be a traitor again. There is no, <laughs> no one more suitable for the job. I knew it! They were working together the whole time anyway. I am not your pawn, Enciodes. I most definitely am not your underling. I'm your partner in crime. Even if you don't agree to it, I'll still do this. Actually, it'll be for the better if you don't. Our charade will be that much more realistic. Carrick has no room for me, truth be told. I couldn't care less whether it had room for me. <sighs> It'll just be another time on my list of charges. Oh, another item on my list of charges. <laughs> I don't care. What's on your mind? I'm thinking that you actually haven't changed much over the last 20 years. And why is that? You're a conceited perfectionist. You always want the perfect result and you always think that you can get it. Perfect results would be if Arctaz and Rotados had not been in our way. The Great Elder would have also accepted the change that Kerrig is about to go through and everything would naturally have unfolded the way we wanted. That isn't the perfect result. You know that. At most, it's the perfect dream. You can't see what you and I can see. They can't see what you and I can't see. 
In that case, you should never have expected them to share the same ideas as us. But you and I think drastically differently as well. Drastically differently. That's a weird mix of words. I told you, NCODs, I am not your pawn. And I'm not your underling. I have my own judgment. And our judgments share many overlapping points. Or would you like to finish me, the traitor, and make this farce real? <laughs> Under the dim light, NCO reaches his hand out to Gnosis. This is cool artwork. I like both of these characters, honestly. Um, He's my favorite character, and I like that he's the villain in this one. Because I also liked him in the Lake Silburnahers. I also liked Gnosis and Degenbrecker's interactions with each other. And it makes it even funnier after seeing the fact that Degenbrecker knocked his ass out in this one. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Uh, during Under the dim light, Encios reaches out his hand to Gnosis. <laughs> I am just glad that you are my dearest friend. Gnosis keeps silent for a moment. Then, he reaches out to shake Encio's hand. I told you, it'll just be another item on the list of my charges. I'm more than used to that. Nothing has changed from all those years ago. Plus the difference in their colors. Like, he wears white, and the other wears black. Okay, one second. She wants out of here. Uh, did I miss something? Arctos is amazing. I'm asking his horses. Hi! You coming back for more Levin? Come here! Don't come down this time, and I won't. I won't stop petting you then, okay? Arctos is amassing his forces. What about Rotados? Take a look at this. Durinciots. The brown tails and silver ashes have long enjoyed an amiable, amicable, amiable relationship. Although we have had our differences in recent years, they are merely the natural result of our differing views on Carrick's future. With Carrick's future having never looked so bright, it's now clear to me that the Silver Ashes have come to represent the aspiration of the masses. Are you being creepy in here? She keeps attacking the green screen. Uh, the Silver Ashes have come to represent the aspirations of the masses with the transfer of powers in place to prevent any unnecessary disputes and to uphold Carrick's peace. I, Rotatos, would like to pledge the Brown Tail's allegiance to the Silver Ashes. That's crazy. I'd like to meet you with meet with you on this uh, matter. Hi, lady. <laughs> okay, if you would be so kind as to set aside our differences. In addition, I would also like to talk to you about the truth behind uh, your parents' passing. Oh, yours, Rotatos. So, it scared me because I felt her come up right here next to my armrest. And she was on my computer, so she could have hit the power button very easily. But then she just jumped up really quick. Hi, lady, you scared me. Sweet baby. She likes to sit up there. An obvious trap. It's worth going, nonetheless. You coming to join me? Why is she doing some weird stuff? It's worth going, nonetheless. The situation is not so optimistic that you can take meaningless risks. We've won, Gnosis. We've achieved our original goal. Now the Palaroshes and the Brown Tails are traitors to Kierig. My spies inside the Brown Tail family will help us with the public opinion. As for the Palaroshes, they may be stubborn, but they are all upstanding people. Once they wrap their minds around the gravity of Arctos's crime, much of the Palaroshes' doors will open to us. We have ample time to sort out what comes next. Arctos and Rotados will not give up so easily. That is exactly why I will meet her. If Rotat... I don't know what she's doing. Rotatos had come with me to Victoria to study all those years ago. She would not be so much weaker than I am. And now, she has put her chips on the table. Just like that. It would be untactful of me not to call this bet. Wait, what? To not call this bet? Oh. Duh. Chips on the table, call this bet. My brain completely forgot I said that earlier. You'll, you'll one day die of your arrogance, Encios. Then so be it. But that won't happen today, or during this outing. As for Arctos, he's not entirely without per surprises, and that is why I'm having you step up now. What can a hot-headed moron like him accomplish? Arctos himself can't, Through do though Dr. Puppetini <laughs> certainly surprised me. 
That is the greatest variable in the game of ours. And it's one that I have to watch out for, Dr. Bubba G. I agree that one <laughs> has done many things beyond my expectation since arriving in Carrick, but is this doctor really worth worthy of your concern? I mean, one who knows almost nothing about Kierig has stepped into one of the stage's most vital roles within such a short period of time, greatly disrupting our plans. I can honestly say that if I were in that position, I would not have been able to do it. And I also cannot begin to imagine what the doctor is planning to do next. I can't either. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, what the fuck? It just went dark. Oh, okay. The doctor can do something that I couldn't begin to imagine. Hmm. This isn't my first time telling you this. If you're afraid of losing, you better not act like you're enjoying the challenge. You fooled many, but you cannot fool me. You cannot fool the bodyguard you hired from Kazimir's either. <sighs> Likewise, this isn't my first time to offer you this rebuttal. Taking delight in a gamble and not wanting to lose are not mutually exclusive. Much of the joy one derives from a gamble comes not from the result, rather it comes from the whole march towards victory. That's why gambling addictions work on people. Uh, fine, say no more. This is always the hardest part for us to reach a consensus. This, was, this is always the hardest part for us to reach a consensus. I only wish that I would still have a chance to save you before your arrogance ends up killing you. We will have many opportunities to debate this later. In any case, I will leave you in charge while I meet with Rotatus. Is there anyone left in Carlin Trade who would listen to me? Why is Matterhorn... The two of them will pass on any of your orders. Gnosis. Sir Enciotis has told us everything. We owe you much. I never thought it could all be a ruse. Let's save the pleasantries. <sighs> And here I thought I could finally get some quiet time. My research has been halted for long, far too long already. At least I could read some books if you kept me locked in here. You're my partner in crime, and this undertaking is ours, together. You will have more than enough time to do your research in the future. Uh, that's only if you make it back here alive. Dagenbrecker! It's time to go, NCOs. I'm leaving everything in your hands, Gnosis. I'm curious. Back at the ceremony, were you going at it for real? What if I was? Then perhaps you need to spend some time to work on your skills. <laughs> I knew that's where I was going. You looked worse than before. <laughs> I needn't you worry. I needn't you worry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my impression is that you could make half, half an enemy of mine. I have to worry lest life will get a bit too boring. Caster is only a side job to me. Your acting could be that much better too, if you were a little stronger. <laughs> that said, I've never seen you even a little excited. Convincing performance. Not that you're acting. Gnosis, what should we... Where's Monch? Monch is being held in another room. I can take you there. Does she know? Serencio said it's best for you to tell her yourself. Lead the way. Holy shit. There's a lot of words in this one. <laughs> Cernosis. Monch takes out a dagger from her boot. It is her most prized weapon. It is a gift that Gnosis made her for her between his experiments. She lightly strokes the dagger, her eyes clouded with doubt and uncertainty. Don't do anything stupid, Monch. It looks like you're well. Thank goodness. I'm fine. You've done a great job. I promised you. Whatever your orders, your wish is my command. Judging by your look, I assume you figured it all out. Right, NCOs and I have all of this planned in advance. I see, so that's really how it is. The Silver Ashes Wise is waiting below the cliff to rescue me, and I've been wondering ever since. Is this... If this... <clears throat> was all a charade planned in advance, then what role do I play in it? And now that I find you here, I'm finally sure. My apologies. You needn't ever apologize to me. Monch, you stand firm in your beliefs. I understand. 
but I will judge for myself what I say. NCO and I had a rift, leading me to leave Carlin Trade and make contact with Rotados. That was our plan all along. The fewer people who knew of this plan, the better. That's why I never told you. Both of us knew the risks. I had to make sure even the finest details were under our control. Everything had to be absolutely perfect. This isn't one of my usual maneuvers. There's no do-over. If that displeases you in any way, I must apologize. No, that's not it. Why? What? It doesn't matter what it is you want to do or what plans you have. I, I'll always support you. Why didn't you believe me? You could have trusted me. Launch, I hope you can understand. Stab. <laughs> it's because I fully trust you that I handed you such an important task under those circumstances. I trust you, my finest subordinate, to perfectly execute my plans. So why was she a part of Brown Tails then? Was she like a plant from them? Don't overthink it. You've done very well and everything is over now. Try to relax a little. You should take the time to rest. Looks like you're not in the mood to talk. I'll come see you again. Trust me? Who trusts me? And where are they? Sir Gnosis, can I still trust you? It's a good question. Operators deployed in bush. Oh, okay. Do be careful, everyone. Great. Um, these fuckers are annoying. Oh, no. No, never mind. I was thinking if I place, like, Shaw here pointing down, she'll shoot him down that way, but then they'll just, like... I don't know. I don't, I don't want them up here, basically, is what I think. Okay. Um, I'm going to assume that they just keep walking here for a little bit before they start going. So I can gonna... see their souls. They're mine to read. Which one are you going to? Are you going up? Probably. Okay, you oh. Uh -huh. okay. Speeding up. Okay, you. Your orders. How soon do you want them gone? She needs to kill ten enemies. That was four. There's her there. Her there. I won't be afraid. Still mulling things. Still soaking yourself in the past. Okay. Well, with that there, I'll place her That's there. It. Get a little bit of AoE down. Okay. So Cora should be able to block anyone that I need her to block. And honestly, Daggenbrecker should be able to kill anyone I need her to kill before they get over there. Um. Well, let's just keep him there. Out of the way, out of the way. How's Shank. that? Shank. Ooh. He needs to uh, get a storm. Yeah. Hi. Boom. Good. Still mulling through convicts who will throw you off pace. Yeah. That honestly should have been enough kills for her to get the thing that I need her to get. So let's start focusing on actually beating it then. Let's put putting here. Basic pop so she stays in the Hi. AoE. And then let's place. Uh... Oh, she got by. She got by, I mean. Um. I think he should be able to kill him. Attack! Let's place. Uh. I mean, do I need another healer, really? What are you like waiting for? It's game over for you. You have violated the fire regulation. Oh, 
lady. Out of the way. Out of the way. Oh, way to go dark. Lady, no, don't jump on the keyboard. She's so mad. I'm right here, Doc. Everyone believes in me. Zack! If anyone gets by past Quora, the Dagon Wrecker will just fuck them up. That's uh -oh. fine with me. How do you like this, set? What are you waiting for? Even the dead can't save you. So Let's get diffusion. Out of the screen. You have violated the fire regulation. Doctor! You want my opinion? Ah, dead, okay. Uh... Oh. Mission there you go! That's how it's done! Hi, lady! Oh, she's headbutting the desk. Oh, right, I have to read some more. Okay. My dear sister, you're jealous of everything I have. My authority, my standing, and my wealth. Yet you don't know that I'm jealous of you for everything you have as well. Your romantic life, your freedom, and your future. Oh, this is Rotato's thinking about her sister. I often wish that we had the opportunity to trade places even though I know we can't. To hand the Browntail clan over to you would mean our family's destruction. Likewise, if I could live your life, it would probably be a life of failure. That's not a good way to think about it. People can both have... Uh, I don't know, it's like, you. I don't know, you'd have to balance it, I guess. I should have expected no less NCOs. Coming to this meeting with just a single bodyguard. I'm not here to fight, and my guess is you aren't here for that either. <laughs> I'd love to, though. Too bad the Brown Tails don't have an enormous army like the Palaroches. Are you coming inside, Deckenbrecker? Would you like me to? You can if you want. Deckenbrecker, wait outside. Are you sure about that? I don't mind at all. You a uh, show of good faith. Uh NCOs, you hide your true thoughts well. Good faith? You're just thinking that there's nothing I can do to you. Or you can say I'm waiting for you to do something meaningful. You don't <laughs> you won't be disappointed then. Come in. I remember correctly, this patch of land used to belong to the old Edelways family. Right, nice house, isn't it? It's in a good location, with a wonderful view. It's a splendid home indeed. Generations after generation, the Ed Edelweiss family has been in charge of Kiarig's texts and scriptures, and they've always enjoyed a decent relationship with the three clans. It was my grandfather who ordered this house built as a villa. I would heard Luca had an interest in architect architecture, and judging from the building's design, I dare say that even Victoria's celebrities architects would have plenty of praise for it. <laughs> I doubt he'd be so happy to hear your approval. If you like it so much, though, I could show you its original blueprints. I'll think about it. Rotatos, now that we're sitting here to share a conversation, do you know what you I'm reminded of? What? That time seven years ago. Seven years ago. Oh. <sighs> you just come back from Victoria. You brought lots of things with you to develop your territory. Then you wanted to restore the Silver Ashes seat in the Tri-Clan Council and to throw the country's gates wide open and so you came to me. You told me that once we opened those gates, we'd have business and the people of Kerrig would get to eat better, dress better. After that, you and I persuaded Arctaz and the Great Elder together and so Kerrig's gates were flung wide open, allowing us to do business with the outside. Those were wonderful times. Rotatos takes a sip of her sisty milk, her words carrying a hint of nostalgia. Do you want out, lady? Okay, let me open the door for you. That's why she was bothering me. She wanted out. <laughs> Those are indeed wonderful times. The Silver Ash and the Polaroshes worked together, side by side. While Carlin Trade, representing Kerrig, traded with the outside world. Capital, technology, and skilled workers flowed into Kerrig, and everything seemed to be going in the right direction. Yet, you chose to put an end to these wonderful times yourself. Rotatos, I used to believe that you were an excellent partner, and you were a disappointment yourself. You were a disappointment yourself, NCOs. 
Those wonderful times were yours, not mine, nor was it Arctaz, and much less the, of Kerrigs. In the end, only Carlin Trade lived the good life. No one else did. How is that in any way wonderful? Still, it's too late for me to say all this. The matches have been decided, and I lost. The loser has no right to talk so loftily. No loser would call herself a loser, Rotados. Tell me, what do you know about my parents' death? Encios, do you think your parents were murdered by my grandfather in Arctaz? The investigation at the time concluded that my parents were killed in a train accident, caused by Gnosis's parents. I never believed it, though. At the time, just like the Tri-Clan Council of today, both Luca and Arctaz's father opposed my parents' industrialization plans. I find it very hard to believe that these were not connected in any way. In that case, let me tell you the truth. The truth is that your parents did indeed die in a train accident. The only difference is that my grandfather framed the Edelwaises. Hold on, I'm not done yet. My grandfather had actually been planning to have your parents killed. This house was prepared so that your parents could be burned alive inside during their visit. Alas, they died on their way here. And so this place, meant to be their tomb, was spared. Right, Arctaz's father, Akisk, what? To my grandfather's plan too. And as you know, a few years after your parents passing, Arctaz's old man passed his clan's title over to him and went off somewhere. Nobody knows if he's even still alive. <sighs> I assume you didn't invite me here to boast, Rotados. I never imagined this would happen, you see. I didn't want anything to do with my grandfather's dealings. She's going to burn down the house. Yet, in the end, the house where he was going to murder your parents is now where you and I will die together. That is indeed ironic. Two bargaining chips for your life. I'd say it's a fair deal. Tatos pulls the handle by her right hand. A chorus of mechanical sounds can be heard from beyond the ceilings and walls, almost like sharp laughter. Boom. Wait, isn't that the trap house Grandpa left behind? Why is it on fire? Isn't she in there with Enciodes? Don't tell me she wants to die with him. Rotados! Hey, what are you doing? Come out! Rotados! Oh, my God. She's hitting it so hard. Thinking bitch, damn it! Why won't this door open no matter how many times I hack at it? Rotados! Rot Rotados! Damn it! Ah, Dagenbrecker! Taking herself out with him, huh? I see. That's an unexpected one. Hmm. You're Rotata's sister. Who are you? You... You're the one who's always following NCOs around. You'll stand in my way. They're gonna die. <laughs> Wait. Who gave you permission to move? Stop. All of you. Hmm? What is it? Here for a little chat. Why would I want to chat with you? Let's cut the crap. Do you have any way through this door? Boom! Just blow up the house. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. I thought the earlier one looked cool, but this one's even better. Oh my god. That's crazy. I mean, neither of them die. Because later, they're in the next one. But that's cool. <laughs> it's so loud outside. After all these years, his traps still per work perfectly. Thought your next move would be to escape. While I was distracted. If I could run. If I was could run. <laughs> if I could run. Wouldn't that mean that you could get away too? There's no way out of this room. Uh, once it's activated. Everyone's inside as good as dead. <sighs> it won't be easy for anyone outside to break in and help either. Please. I beg you NCOs. Die with me here. You have, you'll have me go out with you. It's my time to wonder Rotados. What is it that drove you to go this far just to stop me? Everyone always says that. Just like old Luca, Rotados looks... Rotados looks cares for nothing but profit. Sure, I am his granddaughter. How could I not? I started working with you because I had my eyes on the riches that trade with the outside world could get us. In the end, you and Carlin Trade gobbled up all the profits. That's why I was going to crush Carlin Trade through the Great Elder. That way... I could take the lucre for myself. That's what everyone thinks. That's been my reputation the past couple years. And you think the same way. I won't argue that. 
My grandfather always wanted to make the Brown Tails the greatest clan in Karen. That's what separates the two of us. Right before he died, he summoned me to his deathbed and loudly mocked Arctos' old man for being a coward. Then he told me to swallow both your family and the Polar Roche whole. The way I see it, Arctos' dad was a more decent human being. I agree. And I also think that even if the Pal Brown Tails became the only clan Kerrig, the people wouldn't call themselves Brown Tails anyway. Kerrig is called Kerrig because Kerrigander herself named this place so. Because our faith stood in these lands for over a thousand years. But look at us now. It's been several hundred years since the clans started to manage their own lands. Before you came back, all the Tri-Clan Council ever discussed was each year's events and which family would foot a bigger portion of the ceremony's bill. We stand on the same lands. We speak the same language, eat the same food, and believe the same goddess. Yet, we grew further and further apart because we belonged to different clans. And the truth is, that's how we differentiate ourselves. Kierigander's people... <clears throat> Kierigander's still in the people's heart, but the Kierig name is slowly being forgotten. <sighs> when you came back to Kierig and told me about your plans to open the borders, I was really happy. I was happy because you told me that not only will the Silver Ash trade with the other countries, you wanted the other clans to join. I thought that could bring all three families together. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, what happened? Encios shifts his posture. Anyone who knows him knows that this means he is listening attentively. Carlin trade trades with the outside world as the Silver Ash family business. It's naturally a different beast from operating it as Kierig's window to the outside world. And I've actually considered uniting the three clans myself. You have? <laughs> I study up on economics quite a bit to figure out what it is we, you were doing. You lowered the tax rate to lure foreign capital and gave them special treatment. To keep the, ser to keep the money flowing, you signed all kinds of unequal trade agreements with those big corporations. And, you should know, I knew you were building factories to shore up the military. You were never going to be able to hide that from me. Do you think I called it quits because I had my eyes on your money? I was scared. I couldn't see anything that suggested you were going to unite the three clan cans. <laughs> All I could see was you trying to turn Kerrig into something of your own. That or somebody else's. If the choice is between you and the Great Elder, I choose the Great Elder every time. I have to admit that I have misjudged you, Rich Autos. If you open, if you're opening up to me, I may as well tell you a little bit about this. Kerrig may be rich in minerals and other raw resources, but crucially, we lack any technology of our own. This places us at a disadvantage when it comes to technological trade. Some technologies can be bought with money, while others cannot. Do you know what that means? For example, the rights to operate the Mount Harlan trade route bought us an entire set of last generation railway signals, as well as the right to offer the, the, a first offer for soon to be retired rail cars. Without these, we'd have to rely on what my parents left us with, the old tracks in a rail car fleet, rail car fleet that was a decade old. They were practically useless for both industrial or civil civilian transportation. As another example, we traded the collaborative mining rights to the eastern mines for rim billetins or smel smelting technology and equipment. Do you know how much more efficient our processes became thanks to that technology? I don't care what you managed to trade, NCOs. I care about what you gave them. We are out of time, Rotados. Be it Victoria, Minos... Columbia or Casimir's, the only reason they hadn't yet laid their fingers on Kerrig is that they don't have to. In earlier times, before nomadic cities were invented, when men were sent scrambling across the world by catastrophes, the different cultures that had been broken up all across the lands knew little about one another. Modern nations had yet to be established, and there were no communications or contact between them. Then, the Age of Innovation came 200 years ago. It was still a time when everyone focused only on their own development, barely making contact with another. However, fast forward to a few decades ago, 
the nations in the world gradually began making contact and clashing. With Gaul's support, Colombia declared its independence from Victoria. However, barely a decade after that, the Battle of the Four Emperors led to Gaul's destruction. Colombia and Lithanian's war over Bolivar continues to this day. Not only that, but... Oh, shit! Not only that, but the conflicts between nations sped up their communications with one another. Countries began to enter into trade agreements, establishing trade companies in each other's territories. None of them could keep themselves isolated anymore, and they all began to find ways to get along with other nations. And when all of this was happening, Kerrig was completely oblivious. And now that the danger is at our doorstep, we're still oblivious. Victoria is busy with its own mess. Colombia's pioneering efforts are nearing its western mountain ranges. For a long time, Keurig has been nothing but a barren, impoverished territory, not worthy of occupation. But if Victoria solves its internal conflicts, if Colombia has any idea about Victoria, or even if Casimir's wanted to head south, when the time comes, do you think Keurig will still be able to enjoy peace? He makes a good point. You need to keep up with the people around you, otherwise you'll get swallowed. From a country point of view, of course. Well, I guess it's like true for anything that's competitive. Like competitive video games even. It's like if you suddenly aren't doing good, you're not gonna get money. And it's YouTube, Twitch, and everything like that. It's If you don't have something that keeps you unique or competitive in some way, or you have like a personality that people like, and then suddenly you just aren't in it anymore then people aren't gonna watch you and you're just gonna die out and all your subscribers or followers or whatever it is will just go to the other thing <laughs> that's better hey i'm talking to you are you even listening look i'm begging you do you have a way to bust open this stinking door how clamorous what was that pipe down and don't come too close you'll ruin my uniform is now the time to worry about that Degenbrecker shoves Cirrus, who is tugging her hem, to the side and walks toward the small house where Encios and Rotato sits. All of the windows have been sealed shut with metal plates, and there's a thick wall between right in front of her. This is your clans. Are you sure you don't want to stop me? Why the hell would I? Do it already! <laughs> the whole building explodes. Degenbrecker grins a little and cuts through the wall with ease. Of course. Then she slightly kicks the wall sending what appears to be an indestructible barrier collapsing onto the ground like a child's toy. The only thing that serves as a testament to its tremendous mass is the loud bang that can be heard when the wall crashes to the floor. However, Degenbrecker doesn't seem satisfied with the result. If I knew this would happen, I would have ignored NCOs and thrown my old buddy into the storeroom. Too much of a pain to do this with a sword. The bodyguard tosses her blade aside and pulls her namesake sword breakers from her waist. The Dagenbreckers. The wall crumbles like a sheet of paper through a shredder. <laughs> oh my god. She's too strong, guys. She's gonna kill everything. The flames are spreading throughout the room, engulfing everything in their path. Yet the, the room's two occupants seem completely unconcerned about what's happening around them. It's as though they can't feel even... Oh, they can't feel any of the heat. Or perhaps they themselves are burning even hotter than the flames around them. I have to admit that I never expected you to feel this way about Kyrg. If our conversation had happened sooner, things would not have come to this. But it seems this must have been inevitable. Were it not for the situation we are in, we would have never had this heart-to-heart. -heart. <laughs> you got that right. Inevitable. Right. Inevitable. And if it's so inevitable... We might as well go meet Kiragonder together. Kratos is starting to feel exhausted. Her vision begins to cloud. In a trance, she sees her younger self playing with her baby sister and a boy. She sees herself amazed by the wondrous sight of railroads and factories. They are all moments to which she can no longer return. She shakes her head, and Siod sitting opposite her has maintained his posture throughout. Be that as it may, she is no longer able to clearly make out his face. Sure enough, he'll act so calm, even at a time like this. Even so, he'll die here at the same time. <laughs> Her consciousness is slipping further and further. 
Just as she's about to slip away completely, her, she hears a thunderous roar as Degan Brecker destroys the whole house. And with it, a familiar voice. Ah, knocks it over. Rotatos, time to go, NCOs. Oh no, I killed my magic heart. Fuck. Bro got executed by the water bottle. <laughs> Sorry. Got a little magic heart Lego guy. The water bottle fell on his head and just shattered him. He's upside down, I think. He is. That's funny. <laughs> oh, no, don't auto. Don't auto. No, stop. Fuck! Rotatos, you're finally awake. I'm alive! He'll never die with Degenbrecker around. Fair. <laughs> so our house trap, the pride of the brown tails, couldn't stop you, huh? The wall itself wasn't a problem, but it was a pain to find your room. Oh, oh I accidentally changed the DPI. DPI on my mouse. Why save me? I'm here to accept the brown tails' surrender, not to claim the head of their master. I only said that to lure you here, and now that you are here and have kept me alive, you should know that I'm not going to let you have the brown tails under your thumb. Serenciotes, it's Serenciotes. Uh oh. Serenciotes, did you really escape from the burning house? Rotato, she's the one who did this, isn't she? Don't worry about her. Quick, find us a coat. Take mine, Serenciotes. Take my coat. Nobleman from among the crowd ardently removes his coat, but then he then courteously walks up to Enciotes and puts the coat over his shoulders. Over Enciotes takes the coat off and walks over to Rotados, who is sitting on the ground to put her coat on her instead. Then, without saying another word, he stands up and heads for his car, parked on the side of the road. Not only did he not arrest Rotados, he gave her the coat? He's far too generous. Hey, Rotados here. Uh, should we, you know... Serenciotes just spared her. I'm not sure that's a good idea. What do you know? Serenciotes is giving us this opportunity. What do you think you're doing? Huh, serious, huh? Uh, don't worry. We'll take care of you too. Scram, all of you. God, this bitch is nuts! Hey, Rotatos. Rotatos? Snap out of it. We gotta move. To where? Where can we go? Look around us. They're all brown tail subjects. Can you tell just from looking at their eyes? We've lost everything. I can't because they just look like typical PN. The normal PNGs that's been used every single time. They don't look even like angry or anything. Uh. Oh, hi, Sharp. Looks like I got here too late. You, you're the one who saved me in Arctos. So even you came to laugh in my face? No, the doctor would like to have a chat with you. I, I'll pass. Looking at where we ended up, what's good? What good would that bring us? She's giving up. Homeland! Yeah! Her status is updated. Let's go look at that. That's really good. That was... I like that one. I... I like this event a lot, honestly. Doctor, you Probably know because... how busy your schedule is today, yes? Yes. Probably because I like the characters. Unlock. Footnotes of the past. Among Deccan Wrecker's luggage, it's like... Oh. Doctor, you can further upgrade already unlocked modules to further strengthen the combat capabilities of your operators. What? Tap here to edit the operator's module. Tap on the unlocked exclusive module. After the module is unlocked, it will become level one and can be upgraded further. Oh, damn. Okay. I like that one. Uh, Degan Brecker is still my favorite character, I think. She's funny in like dry humor. Dry humor is my favorite type of humor. And kids falling down, of course. Because that's always great. Um, I am excited to read more of that story though. I'm having a ton of fun with it and I hope you are too. Um, because that's all I have time for right now. So if you like this video, like and subscribe. I love having you guys around. If you want to support the channel and buy me a coffee, go over to my Ko-Fi. It'll be down in the description. I'm gonna probably start posting the thumbnails there early again. Um, if you want to join the Discord and talk to some people that like like playing this game, uh, join. We'd love to have you there. I love 
asking opinions of people in the Discord first. Before the videos come out, they always get the first say in things. <laughs> um, so, why not join them and get... That's about it, though. Um, thank you so much for all the support the channel gets. I'm almost at 800 subscribers right now, and I didn't think it was possible. Um, if this became a job, I'd be so happy, because this is, like, one of... It's, it's one of my favorite things to do on my own time, is make videos for you guys to watch. It's been really hard to with work lately in school, and I'm really sorry for that because I've I've just been not able to record. And homework. Oh my god, the homework. I spent like four hours on one assignment yesterday. It's just been so hard to keep up with that and then also record. So I'm sorry and thank you for the continuous support while I haven't been here. Um that's it for this video though, so you better have a good night. And bye-bye!